Hey, podcasters, another week, another blank slate of opportunity for you to get out there and make some changes. Are you glad? I mean, I hated the weekend. I'm just so glad we're back to the week. Mm Mm-hmm. For again, like you were saying, new opportunities. New opportunities, Nikki. I'm all about it. <laughs> so let's talk about the kind of opportunities that you're going to have to hear things in the podcast. We talk about my cough, which should be happening soon now that we're talking about it. <laughs> uh, the Canadian company that wants you to take naps, Arctic Survival Vacations. If you're like, what do I want to do this summer or spring break? Just maybe this isn't perfect. it, but still listen to this. <laughs> no, you know what? A lot of people are on spring break right now. I saw that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a whole month. It really depends on where you're at. Oh, yeah. I want Doesn't to it sound break. nice? I yeah. know. I know. I okay. I want, I need about a month and a half. A month and a half. That's a big break. I know. I know. Um, I can't guarantee we'll hold everything for you. I'm just thinking in terms of like you need a week or two off just to decompress. Sure. Then you got to have time to think and process and work and whatever. And then. Then you got it. When you come back, I almost like to come back with a couple of days to kind of ramp back up to go back to work. Yeah. So if you're gone for so long, you're going to need like another week just to come back and have a vacation from the vacation. Yeah. To be ready for the week. Yep. That sounds about right. So you can see how most companies aren't giving you that much no, in one we, in one run. And I wonder why burnout and depression, these are all big <laughs> issues <laughs> in modern American workforce. Why but you try Europe? Maybe that's more yeah, your, your style. I could may, maybe that's what I need. They take what sometimes they, like the month. Like off. the six week holiday. Yeah. They're on holiday. They're on holiday. Yeah, we'll tell you this. If you're looking for something to make you get maybe some warm fuzzies, like, oh my gosh, it's, you should totally stop by the Riot's Facebook page. That's Radio You Riot on Facebook. Uh, we shared a little something about a basketball team that makes a buzzer beater shot. I always it, love that term. You know what? It's the best thing I've seen all day. I There's something about it. I just love it. Especially, you'll find out the guy that makes that shot, he had just missed... Two Two. foul shots Mm. and basically, quote unquote, lost the game for his team. He said that, not me. And then, whoa. Then he comes back with that shot. Whoa. We all could use a nice, we've we've seen some other videos that. Not as nice. Or just terrible. So it's nice that we (laughs) have one to balance that out today. So again, that's at Radio U Riot. Make sure you follow and um, sign up to get notified on our Facebook page and also Radio U Riot on YouTube as well. So there you got it. Anything else? Have a fantastic Monday. Bye. You don't have to apologize unless you've done something wrong. Well, I'm sorry. I can't even think straight right now. This is the worst of the riot. We're very, very sorry. It is the riot on radio. Oh, radio. you? Yes, no, it is. You don't even know. Like, Was I, it bad I, over I the weekend? All weekend. Really? What? For nothing, though. There's no, like, hey, my... I'm singing. No, um, I'm talking. No. Well, you started to run last week. Maybe it's still a here. It's we're just coming up with a, it's a delayed reaction this or something. A delayed reaction to the run that you took <laughs> well, last week or the runs that you took during the week. And I, it just bothered you. I guess like I cough, 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 dry cough. It's a I very got, dry cough. It's yeah, not even nothing. like a, a real, real cough. It's like a dry one. It's like nothing there. Like can't get anything out. Can't. Can't whatever. What just, do you do for a dry cough? Um, I used to have that prescription stuff, the chesty cough. Well, see, that's what it's not that though. It's not that. So I don't know. There's something else. Uh, probably nothing. Like cough drop suffer. Is there a doctor listening? Let's see. Wait, like, <laughs> do you have an exhausting cough, dry cough? Dry cough remedy. Yeah, maybe find something with that. <laughs> Try these five steps to manage your cough at home. Stay hydrated. Okay, I got water. Um, try lozenges and hot drinks. A menthol cough drop, Yoder suggests. Apparently, it's Dr. Yoder. Um, take steamy, sh- oh, steamy showers. And use a humidifier. I, I took a, I, was it steamy this morning? I don't know. It was hot. Not hot so, enough. Uh, remove irritants from the air. Things like, you know, coworkers, friends, family. Those are some real irritants in the air. <laughs> Once they're gone, you'll feel better. Take medication to treat cough. That's weak. Like, there's nothing, nothing's helping me. And you drink coffee, so I, I guess that does count as the hot drink. It says dry, hacking coughs respond to honey and hot water, tea, or lemon juice. Elevate your head with extra pillows at night to ease a dry cough. Try a cough drop to soothe an irritated throat. Now, it says a dry cough can occur alongside a, you know, more of a tickly cough can be caused by a viral infection or allergies. Let's see. How about this? Dry cough for months. The, 
for days. The chronic cough is always a co- cause of concern for smokers. Well, don't have that. Um, dozens of conditions can cause a recurrent lingering cough, but the lion's share are caused by just five. Post-nasal drip, asthma, gastri- gastroesophageal reflux disease, chronic bronchitis, and treatment with <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> with ACE inhibitors used for high blood pressure. Well, I mean, maybe a post-nasal drip. I have been blowing my nose. Could be. It's probably the source of it. Uh, I mean, I don't have bronchitis, GERD, or I'm not taking an ACE inhibitor. That's, and according to this list, that's all. All right. Well, you know what? I'm enjoying it. So let's just. <laughs> Maybe take a, an allergy pill or something. Yeah, here's what I. No, I, I'll be asleep in 20 minutes. Is that what you want? But then you don't have the cough. Okay. Like, well, do you want the fix or do you want it not? I need you to decide. Do you want do me I awake? Do I need you here today or, or not? Like, what do you want me to do? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I know that uh, it's with me. And here, okay. Real talk. I wonder, does anybody hear other people on the radio doing that? Like, are there other, yeah, like, are there other morning show people that are like, they have a cough that's lingered for months and you just keep hearing them cough? Because I feel like that's not something that happens to other people just here. But we can only hear ourselves. We can't hear other people. I can't listen to them. I'm busy. Well, um, listen, it's real. Okay. This show is real. We're not like radio people. I just want to know if other radio people have this problem. That's all. I think other people listening must, have right? a persistent cough as well. And so they relate it sounds to normal. you. Yeah. It's like, oh, this guy has it too. Oh, look, we're all coughing. <laughs> hey, you've got to hand it to Obadiah and Nikki. Anyone can eat junk food all day. Where's my food? But they've figured out a way to get paid for it. The Riot on Radio U. Dude, it, this is amazing. <laughs> like, this is, if you're going to see anything today, as much as I love the Riot's anniversary event, that's not the video to see. <laughs> the Oscar recap video is not the video to see. This shot from a New York State high school basketball game is the thing you want to see. It was the it's a buzzer beater. It is a buzzer beater. It's crazy, dude. It's the Section 1 Class A final game. So I believe it was like the championship for that level of high school. Um, Julian McGarvey, who plays for, oh, let me see if I can get these teams right. Um, oh, where did it go? Um the guy's name is McGarvey. It was Ardsley High School in Ardsley, New York. Was playing against Pleasantville, which is a, a uh, city near Chappaqua yeah. in New York. So Ardsley versus Pleasantville, and he <laughs> McGarvey. He's a high school senior. He missed. There's like 3.8 seconds on the clock, and he missed the two free throws that would have won the, the game, game for the team. Sure. So he ends up. Obviously, misses the free throws. The ball goes to uh, Pleasantville. Pleasantville passes it in. McGarvey is down court, and he intercepts the ball. He just dribbles one time, turns it, and chucks the ball. <laughs> and it is. The buzzer goes off. The ball swishes through the net. It was so cool to see. And they win. Oh, yay. Crazy, dude. Course, Absolutely crazy. Everybody goes crazy uh, in the in the auditorium. Oh, how could you not? I mean, yeah. it was pretty much, man, it the was gymnasium like, is just losing it. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was like that Michigan State game where it was like it was a give, like it was a given. It was just a given that the other team had won. He missed the free throws. All the other team had to do was throw the ball in and stand there. And instead, dude chucks it all the way down court. And, oh my gosh, it's just, you could have never predicted it. And well, that, it's amazing to see it. It's always bad when they miss and, you know, everybody's like, well, it's not really your fault that the game that we didn't win, but yet you were the one oh, the yeah. end who missed those. But to come back and, and make it work, that's amazing. Oh my gosh, dude. It Again, it's totally worth seeing. I'm going to re, like, I'll post it. You can find it on the Riot's Facebook page at Radio U Riot, where you can is you can also find. This is one of those feel good video clips, and we've yeah. got plenty that are the exact opposite. Right, so it's right. nice when you can highlight um, an actual nice one. <laughs> so you can check this out, feel good about it, and then while you're there, you can also uh, have mixed feelings about the Riot's <laughs> anniversary show. Yeah, don't just stop at this. Just scroll down a little bit, and you'll catch our Riot anniversary show from last week. Um, hopefully, you'll enjoy that just as much. That goat farm is looking more and more likely every day. 
It's the worst of the riot. Uh, Nikki and I originally had thought that maybe we would forego the fundraiser this year and just become Instagram stars. Like Insta Famous. But we realized we appreciate the fundraiser time to spend with you guys, so we passed on that. Mm-hmm. Though we had the opportunity. Well, I was reading this weekend <laughs> about Lisette Calviero. She's 26, and she decided that what she wanted to do was become an Instagram travel superstar Insta whatever famous, yeah. she wanted to be insta famous and she knew that in order to get insta famous there was going to be an upfront cost you know you got to invest in a bunch of stuff to get some good pictures and then of course you're going to build momentum and then once the momentum takes off then brands are going to start paying you and then you'll make your money back and it's it's an investment you got to see it for what it is it is an investment and Lizette was like you know um, once she hit ten thousand dollars, she was like, "I don't think the investment's going to pay off. I think I've, I think I've hit my limit." You think she's? She decided she or realized she overspent. She was trying to get back to a budget, but it was just an interesting article talking about if you want to be social media famous, not just mm-hmm. Instagram, but if you want to, um, you've got to live a life that you can't normally afford. Yeah, in order to really have some good looking stuff um and she spent the money though and then she had to realize she could not do that she now recycles old photos to keep her feed fresh and uses rent the runway to keep her wardrobe fresh instead of buying new clothes because she can't travel as much so instead of uh, going to travel to a new location you post pictures from when you did spend the money (laughs) to go on vacation i i see a A lot lot of of throwbacks i actually see a lot of people do that they'll post a picture and i'm like what? <laughs> you guys went to blank? They're like, it was three well, years ago. yes, that's just it. <laughs> like, well, don't post it like it's now. Was well, The article, though, was interesting to show you a lot of people do these tricks to make you think they're living this lifestyle, but they don't always tell you that's what they're doing. So you're trying to mimic what their lifestyle's looking at, and you just can't do it. To quote a friend of mine, he's like, did you see that picture of me with my new BMW? I was like, no, and he's like, well... It actually wasn't mine. I was just leaning on it yeah. for the picture. Yes, exactly. So there you go. You That's just, what people do. You just lean on it for the picture and then you move on. You I just mean, want people to assume and yeah. take their own thing from the picture. Like, oh, that must be their car. Maybe you need to start thinking of Instagram as your movie. Like, for example, let's say, I don't know why this is the first thing I thought of, but like uh, I watched Mission Impossible 3 a couple weeks ago and they're driving to some party at the Vatican and like the girl's driving. I don't even know what kind of car it is. It's so expensive. If I don't know what it is, but for the movie, they didn't buy that car. They no. just bar- they borrowed it. A they, couple of them. They took their pictures at 24 frames per second, and then they <laughs> said it back. This is the first thing that came to your mind. Well, I was trying to think of expensive cars that whatever, or like look <laughs> at Top Gear, not Top Gear, but uh, the Grand Tour. The Grand Tour. They don't own those cars. Somebody loans them the car. They take their pictures. They send them back. Hmm. That's a good point. So that's what you need to do. You need to get in a borrow lifestyle. Where you're like, hey, I just need it for a couple of pictures. And, and then, then I'll done. give it right back. And you can even do that with food. Stop into a nice restaurant. You're like, hey, don't. Like, what could you, you ordered look good. It I'll, looks great. Can I take a picture of it? I'll give you $5 if you'll just set, move aside. Let me take this picture and I'm out. I wouldn't even offer five. Well, I think, think it with a smile. 10? No, with a smile and a, an explain, explanation for it. What, what about a coupon? For free. Like, hey. <laughs> Can I just, so I remember next time I know what to order, and then they don't know. Listen, this coupon will entitle you to a free Frosty after your meal (laughs) at the Wendy's down the street. You're welcome. So uh, I just need to take this picture really quick. Well, if you'd like to, um, while you're on Instagram, make sure you join us at Radio U Official. Yeah. And you can always follow Radio U there. Or you can follow Obadiah Radio U, who is not an Instagram star. Or Radio U Nikki, who's even less, so. Well. You know, well, yeah, but you've got dogs to take pictures ah, of. That's I got like dogs for days. Yeah, I, I actually sometimes look at your pictures and I'm like, give me a you break. Need a, you need a pet. I do because I'm just like, like if I had something like this to take pictures of, it's easy. Are you talking about when it was my dog's birthday and I Maybe. put a birthday hat on him? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was. Maybe that is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Come on, it was so cute. I'm not saying it wasn't, but like it's low hanging fruit. It's easy. <laughs> it's easy, but that's what you that's, do to be insta famous, Obi. Maybe that's what you should tell this girl. She needs to just get a dog. She needs a pet, and then she won't have to travel. Don't want to talk to the riot? We completely understand. Text and said 8772 Radio U. Last night, I wanted nachos. 
and I didn't have any nachos. Was this like a late night craving or something? It wasn't like late, late. It was like 3.30. Oh, that's fine. In the afternoon. And so I was like, well, all right, we got three options here. One, suffer. Just want nachos and not have nachos. That's one. Two, go to the store and buy the nachos. Three, pay someone else to go to the store and deliver the nachos. Yeah. So I went to the store and and got nachos. Not so what? The story ends there, except while I was at the store, I ran into somebody and I ran into them twice. The first time I was like, hey, how's it going? Whatever. The second time I ran into them, I did something that only after doing it did I realize like I probably shouldn't have done that. It depends on their humor. Well, I have a feeling does. maybe maybe they didn't get it. Okay. Um so I walked by the second and time. I think it, maybe I just didn't have anything else to say, but I had to acknowledge them in some way. You know what I mean? And so I just noticed that their cart was mostly empty, except that it had cookie dough in it. And I was like making cookies and they were like eating chips. And I was like, we're living, we're living right. And just walked on. Then I realized in that moment like, should you be commenting on what's in someone's cart? Oh, yes. Like, is that okay? Because on some level, I felt like, like for the briefest of moments, I was standing in their house, staring into their kitchen like, oh, what else you got in here? What's in your fridge? I feel like you were okay, though, because you had something that worked on the same level. Like, if your cart would have been way healthier... Yeah, then like I if I was like, holding an apple. Yeah, like if it was just apples and and protein and and all that stuff, then I didn't even have a card. I just had three bags of chips. <laughs> that was it. But so you you seemed on the same level, cookie dough and chips. That's the same. It's the same. That's the same. That's the same. Like. <laughs> drunken Sunday afternoon, yeah. even though I hadn't been drinking, well, but that's what it sounds like. Chips you're, in the afternoon. You're laying on the couch like I want some nachos. <laughs> yeah, that person just wanted cookies. Well, that's all they wanted. So we're at the store. They wanted cookies. I wanted nachos. Could have had a party. So I don't think they got offended. Probably. I know, but for future reference. Is it okay to talk to somebody about what's in their cart at the store? Because again, it, feels, it depends on what's in your cart and what what uh, what the else they have with it. Because I started thinking about it, like you know, it's on display. Everyone can see what you have. There's those little slats, you know. Everybody can see what's in the cart. But then I started thinking, you know, what if they like? What if they spent the whole day like I'm not getting the cookies? I'm not getting the cookies. This and then they finally gave in. And and you're so like well. so cookies, and they're like every. I eat a cookie. Someone has to say something. It could have been it. You pushed him over. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> you just have to be careful. I have no idea. Well, I'll tell you what. I it was one of those moments. I call that an ethnographic stumble. You can Google that if you want to. But it was a stumble, and I was like, you know what? Don't do that again. <laughs> like from now on, just in case you don't see it, you don't know what's going on, you don't know anything. You guys. You might not know this, but about me, I have about a million rules for my mouth that I have to follow all the time. So what about the nachos? What did you get? I got some nachos. Just the chips or did you get cheese? Or yeah, I got some cheese. cheese. Like a mild, uh, what was that? I can't, Tostito salsa, I think. You just microwaved it. No big deal. Sometimes I just love when it's like, you know what? I feel like chips. I want some chips. I'm going to have some nachos. And, you know, arguably it's like, you know, the adult in you should have said no and should have gone for the celery. But the adult in me was like, I'm an adult and I've got a bank account and a car. So I'm getting what I want to get. Pass. And if you wanted to play the game, I mean, I guess you could say, at least you weren't making cookies. <laughs> So, well, I don't think don't those say not- that to the person. Though. I don't think those nachos were any better for me. True, and you know, like I Less will sugar. just just to let you know, I almost picked up some cookies too because <laughs> I was like, you know what, we go great with these nachos, some cookies. cookies. That's because you saw what was in your friend's cart. I know. Which again, I two things I need to do here: not look in their cart, never look in anyone's cart, and two, if you accidentally break rule number one. Don't say anything about it. So basically, you should never make eye contact with the items in a cart. You should never talk to people ever. Let's just go with that. Better save. Leftovers from the most disgusting meal you've ever had. It's the worst of the ride. 
on Radio U. Aaron said, for what it's worth, if you said that comment at the store to Aaron, would have laughed as well. So, okay. your previous conversation, I think you're in the clear. Uh, I think Aaron and then whoever else we just talked to on the phone, I, I think you guys are good natured. <laughs> I think, that, nice. I think I'm rolling the dice anytime I do that. <laughs> Could have been way worse. Cookie dough in someone's cart, way worse. Do you comment on what they're eating or you just let it go? Right. And I, I think it just depends on the person. But, you know, like, I wouldn't care if somebody said something to me about what was in my cart. I'll you know what, like, though? Yeah. You never know when you're going to hit someone, no matter what you say, on the wrong day and they're yeah. going to care. Yeah. They're just like, listen here, Tubby. It's like, why do, do we have think, to go back with that think, one? Who do you think you are? <laughs> Like, oh, I'm the guy holding the nachos. I don't know. <laughs> well, don't forget to also check out if you missed last week. Um, on Thursday night, we hosted a special show for our Riot anniversary. That's been yeah. posted through our Radio U Riot YouTube channel if you follow and subscribe to get notified. And then also our Radio U Riot Facebook page. Also there on Friday, we checked in with Danger Scene. So the interview with Matt is there, too. Oh, man, I miss the cake so much. <laughs> Maybe I got too small of a cake. I, I went with so a much. round cake for our anniversary show. It was a two double decker. And I, I did that because on um, previous times I felt like I went too big with a sheet cake. So I thought this would be like a smaller print footprint for it. Mm-hmm. And maybe we would enjoy it a little bit more because it would just be for you and me. But I don't feel like the cake went as far. It was gone very quickly. Pretty, pretty quickly, yeah. Yeah, like Friday afternoon. No, not even that. Like midday Friday. Not even that. Okay, early after the fr- show, Friday early, morning. Yeah, I was going to say, earlier on Friday. Because Nikki took some of it home, and then I took the rest home, and I was like, mm, that was it. oh, where'd so it go? I, I think we ate the cake. Outside of Josh, who had some. Right. I think we're the only ones who ate the cake. Oh, well. <laughs> it's fine, but we're missing it now. We would like to have I, some more. I legit miss it. I thought I was driving in this morning thinking about it, and I was like, we had a great time last week. Wouldn't it be great if there was still cake? <laughs> but I went with a smaller one, so maybe next time I'll go back to a sheet cake. Well, let's let's look ahead. Radio U's birthday is coming up during the spring fundraiser. If you want to give it a birthday present in advance, you can at RadioU.com slash donate. But should we get a cake? Well, we get a cake for that birthday party. Now, we got two things we have to think about. One, we have to remember that you and I will eat a lot of it. And then two, we have to remember that there are a bunch of other people that are going to think that they deserve a piece. Well, there'll be more people here during that time. And it's a Radio U birthday cake, so I think everybody does deserve a piece. I don't like words like deserve, but (laughs) uh, I will tell you that we will allow them to have a piece. Some of it. But I want to use a word, okay? I want you to listen to this word, okay? Full. Full, yeah. Okay. You'll, and you're like, what's full? Well, full is the biggest cake. Uh, because if you go in, they'll be like, do you want a quarter? Do you want a half? Oh, a full sheet cake. Not like full. Like, I wanna, can't eat anymore. Do you want a full? A full and sheet cake. Those are a, huge. Yep. But you know, it's a big birthday. It is. It's an and important I, one. I want, you to, I want to take you back. Like, just wind back the clock just a little bit. You'll recall that you were like, well, I wanted to reduce the footprint. And I wanted to have what, you know, you're you're all about small, 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 small. Well, you know what? And now we're out. And now we're out. And we don't have any. So if for Radio U's birthday, if for a day or two following, you want to still be eating cake. True. Which I do. Then we could, we should get the full one. Full. Full sheet cake. How many full. does that serve, though? I'm thinking like 40. Yeah. Full sheet cake. Or 10 DJs. Or 10 DJs. <laughs> How many pieces are in a full sheet cake? Um, no, that's not right. Up to 117 servings. Well, it's eight. 117 <laughs> servings, OV. A half one does 54 okay. servings. Well, all right, is that wait, wait, right? Wait, wait, wait. A full sheet cake is 18 inches by, by 26. 26 inches. So it says up to 117 servings. Have you ever seen the recommended serving size on a box? I'm sure it's, it's small. It's absurd. It is absurd. <laughs> that worries me. That might be a bit much. <laughs> you know what? You put me in charge of the cake. Okay, you I'll do it. And then I, you tell us what, what we're that supposed full to do. Cake. And they're like, we shouldn't. I'll be like, well, what about all these volunteers during the fundraiser? <laughs> they really need it. They need cake and that's don't send it home with 117 them. servings. I told you that's 10 real people servings. The riots. Turn it down. And rip the knob off. Radio U. Nick, you were saying you would not want to vacation yeah I in don't the think, antarctic i don't think there 
What about in the Even Arctic Circle? Even though that circle? could be like a bucket list thing, like down the road, maybe. You maybe want to make sure you get there? The Arctic, I feel like, falls right in the same category. Now, I don't know about the, well, again, Antarctica, but here is something you could do in the Arctic. The Extreme Polar Training Course that's offered by Northwinds Expeditions. So here's what you that do. That seems like exercise. Oh, it's way more than is that. It, is it like a CrossFit, but in the in the Arctic? We're so far past CrossFit at this point. They've been doing this for it's twenty Arctic fit for twenty five years. <laughs> what happens is you go up there and you'll spend a week in training for to this. be able to live in those conditions or stay mm-hmm. in those conditions. And then they take you out, and you're a three day journey away from none of it, which is a the northernmost Canadian city, I guess. Yeah, and then you have to make your way back. You have 72 hours to make your way back. And then if you don't make your way back, I guess at some point they'll... uh, Sometimes I have a hard enough time just in a new city, let alone in the Arctic. Dude. (laughs) I don't know about that expedition. I don't know if I have it in me either, but I do have something that I could teach you right now, Nikki, about your survival. The five rules of polar travel. Yeah. All right, first one. Don't hug the bears. All right, the six rules of polar travel. (laughs) Go ahead and put that one on there. Okay, because if you don't do it now, then someone will learn later. All right, here we go. Eat before you're hungry. Drink before you're thirsty. Yeah. Remove layers before you sweat. Put them back on before you get cold. Stop before you're exhausted. These are a lot of rules. How are you supposed to know? I don't know. I'm not hungry. I got to eat. And it's three days enough to really do damage? Uh, Well, I think the idea is that... Like if you were lost in the Arctic, you you could die, but you got a lot of equipment, and they've you spent a week in very intensive survival training. Sometimes I don't pay attention though. <laughs> training. You're looking at your phone the whole time. You're well, like, you're what like, are they saying? Like, I'll get it later. And cool. this, I really needed to pay attention. True, good one. It's called Frostfit. So, dude, that's a good idea. It's. It's insane. Like, so this is just to see if you can do it if you're hardcore enough. Yeah, and it's just you know like for fun. Like that's this is your vacation. Have you ever been to the beach? Let's go with the six rules of beach etiquette. <laughs> Don't <laughs> pet beach, the sharks. Drink before you're thirsty. thirsty. Eat, before, <laughs> you're Eat before you're hungry. Okay, like these are the rules you also need to realize. That sounds like a pretty good vacation right there. Yes, it, turn over before you start to burn. Sure. <laughs> Go in the air conditioning before you start sweating. That's right. Leave the air conditioning before you get cold. Yes. Man, I these I are mean, all that, things I could get behind. That is also an intense vacation. Mm, yeah. I mean, have I'll you ever gotten that. sand? You just can't get it out of all your stuff. <laughs> that drama. It's rough, right? It is. That's why you got to make sure you get a sandproof bag. True. How much do you think a trip like this is going to cost you? To the Arctic for a three-day, well, with training. It's two weeks. Two weeks plus then the, the three days when you try to, they dump you and try to get you back. Uh-huh. Um, I would say $6,000 a person. Oh, that's not bad. Nikki, it's 4000 but obviously you've got to get there. Airfare so not included. you got to get yourself up to none of it or however That you, is the place in Canada. Yeah. yeah. And then you pay the four thousand dollars for that. And so. I don't think uh, Delta's going there. You know, like it's going to be a small regional actually, airline. Okay, we need to look at that right now. Let's see, flights.google.com. All right, why don't you kayak it? <laughs> uh, let's see to none of it. Okay, Chesterfield Inlet, none of it, Canada. It looks like there's there's it's also small something airport. called Whale Cove. Oh, there are no. There are no flights. <laughs> like no, no flights. I have to take a prop plane or something. Uh, oh yeah, like you're going somewhere and then taking a boat. That's what you're doing. So you might be able to get. You know what though? Like I, I don't know. I think you got to go further north than this. I think I might be getting it wrong. <laughs> I'm telling you for real though, like that. This isn't the right place. I, I don't know if that's north enough. We'll do a little more digging, but I can tell you right now, this place right here, yeah, you're boating to that. You're not just, you're not just rolling up. I in think there. you're taking like a little prop, like an ice plane or something. Yeah, I but, didn't say nice plane. I said was, ice. Yeah, I wonder, like, well, how long is that drive gonna take? Do they you can't drive there? up there. Do you think you can't? I looked once to go to where the polar bears are because I was like, well, maybe I could take a trip. <laughs> 
<laughs> and can't drive there. No go. No, no go. All right. Because double... I thought, it can't get in my car. <laughs> I don't like where this is going at all. rip it open. The part that keeps me up at night, we paid them for this. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Alberta, Canada. Who wants to go right now? Let's just get out of here. Let's just go. And some of Canada's my be- calling. Some of my best memories are when I was sitting in class and I was like, let's just go. I just leave. Go do something else. Like you just wanted to go to Canada? You just wanted to get away? Actually, yeah. I've d- I did that. I was sitting with some friends. I was like, let's go to Canada. So we just went. Oh, Canada. Let's just go to Canada. <laughs> right now. Let's just go. People are like, what are you guys doing up here? We're like, we don't even know. <laughs> We're just here. Wow. So Alberta. Yeah, let's talk about Alberta. I'm reading an article here about a company in Alberta that bought a special, like, nap chair thing for the company. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a it's, a, it's a nap pod. It looks like maybe they only got one, but, you know, you guys can Fight switch on and off. You can share. You sit in this really comfortable chair, and this big dome, like, lowers over you. Oh, kind of like the, the egg pod-looking ones? Mm-hmm, and the chair, like, vibrates a little bit, and there's this soft music or whatever, and you set a time timer in it and then say you're like okay i can be in here for 20 minutes and then at like the 18 minute mark the light kind of starts to come on and the music starts to get Slowly a little louder wake you and up. the vibration kind of stops and you're like oh look wow and then you feel refreshed i'm so rested and refreshed how much is a nap pod like that um well nikki i think what we need to do is take a look at some flow charts that will show you how much more work an employee can do after they've been refreshed in a nap pod sure and once we do that then we can begin talking about the cost of the actual nap pod because in productivity, I think you're going to make this money back in the first year. But I feel like you have to just be careful as, you know, the business because you're opening up the door for now naps during, unless they already allowed them, you know, like you take a break and maybe they don't mind if you sleep during your break time. Yeah, sure. Um, So then someone's going to be like, well, I can't get into the pod, but I should be able to sleep anywhere I want to. You know, you shouldn't uh, limit where I can have the nap if you're letting them nap. Well, I want you to think about my behavior here at work. When you like to nap on the floor? Where I just lay on the floor. Yeah. It, I've, like, you don't need a the, fancy all chair. All over the building. Just, <laughs> I, you weren't here, what day was that? It was Thursday afternoon, you were gone. I just laid under my desk for a while. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I even caught you once on the concrete outside on the sidewalk. It's happened. You just lay down. You just don't be afraid of that. No big deal. I mean, here in the studio, I'm on the floor all the time. And uh, you know what, like, in the studio in there... It's this white carpet. I think wherever it came from, they had an animal because I had to get up and wash my face almost oh, right it, away. Yeah, yeah, that that didn't work out. But the sofa that's nearby, you can also nap on that. Yeah, I've spent whole nights on that sofa. So how many or how many of our sofas here can we buy for one of those nap pods? Well, this nap pod from wait, is it the company called Vespi? I don't know, but uh, they said it was about fourteen thousand dollars for uh, one of them. Yeah. I feel like you could have gotten more for that. Well, maybe not a nice one, though. I mean, if you paid someone a salary to just turn the lights on slowly and open the shade and you had a recliner, isn't that about it? No, 14000 full-time. Like, not full-time. And this a... is just one of your responsibilities in your job. Okay. So it's like $14,000. But see, that's a yearly expense. This is going to be a one-time expense. That's still a lot. So, and I mean... And I'll be in it. And someone, I guarantee this, someone is going to break the chair. Because whenever you buy anything nice, someone destroys it somehow. Okay? You're right. Someone is going to do something. It's just a promise that I I know you, I know the business knows deep down. It's like someone will break the $14,000 chair. Here's what I imagine. The little nap pod thing lowers on you and the inside of it is covered in reminder notes. (laughs) So there's that. that. And then you you, try to break three and you punch it. Then you start going into meetings where people are like, whoa, yeah, I guess that's when you were napping in the pod because that's the way we work. That's it. We take out our stress on each other with little jabs. It's also just a reminder, too, we can't have anything nice. But we can't. And you can't have naps during the day. Okay, but what if, all right, what if it was just for us? What if we had like a room? One of us would ruin it. We wouldn't mean to. Maybe you. I Mem- wouldn't do it. Remember the time I spilled my drink the one time and, and I ruined a keyboard? We cleaned it all up, though. Yeah, but I'd spill my tea on the nap egg. Remember when we said things couldn't get any worse? 
We were wrong. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. You guys need to spend some money today. Like, just, I mean, buy something. You're like, I don't need anything. <laughs> no one said you needed it. Man, it's, you got to get out there and invest in the economy. You got to want it and just buy it. You buy stuff. And you know what? I, I just want to reject that. I don't even care if you want it. It's just time to buy. Just buy anything? Buy, buy, buy. That's that's scandalous. All right. <laughs> what so are we buying? We're going to go over to Target. We're going to buy ourselves an Oregon Trail handheld game for $25. Like the old game? Mm-hmm. Or the one that was an app? Or It's still, it came out, yeah, it was an app for a while. Yeah. But no, no, no. Listen, not your phone. You're not going to have a phone. It's a little screen that only plays, plays Oregon Trail. Oregon Trail. Why are they coming out with that? Um, uh, I shouldn't really, ask why. Like, when you're you buying could, something, you're right. We shouldn't ask why. If you could not ask questions like that, I would really appreciate <laughs> Is it. Is this one in like a series of old video games um, that you can now carry with you like you, you couldn't with your phone? Um... I don't think so. I think it just... Just Oregon Trail. It's just a little... A little handheld thing? thing? Okay. Yeah. How much is it? Did it's you 20, say? It's $25. Seems a bit much, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it looks like it. Would, you could put another cartridge in it, but I don't think that you actually can. I think it's just Oregon Trail right there. But the thing is, Nikki, like, you know how with your phone, sometimes when you're your wanting to play dying. Oregon Trail and your, you know, things like text messages, they're distracting you from what you're trying to focus on. They're just trying to do a, a retro thing. So just like for me, like I wanted a Kindle because I felt like my tablet was too distracting. Sure. I also want to buy a specialized device that just plays Oregon Trail. It looks so old. It looks like an old, uh, like an old computer. Yep, I think it's what they're going for. Oh my goodness! All right, well, you can if you're into the retro stuff, and you're like, oh, the Nintendo, those little, uh, the Super NES or the classic. classic. Like even that wasn't retro enough. Then you can have this. Kicking it old school, right wow, here. Wow, that's really weird. Now, Nikki did kind of mention it is true that if you just wanted to play Oregon Trail, you could get it on your phone and probably play it for free. Dude, I listened to a guy, this is like two weeks ago, on a podcast, go into an insane history of Oregon Trail, the game, Mm -hmm. and like all the different versions and iterations that it went through, and how there are people online, I don't know how many there are, but like they're hardcore about certain versions of the game, like, man, I only play play? 1.26 or whatever. It's amazing. Well, if you were one of those people, and I like this article, they're like, Target's going to sell a ton of these systems at $25 a pop. You're like, yeah, right. <laughs> I don't right. know if they're going to sell a ton. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, quite know. I don't know why you'd buy any. I, I don't know either. But you know what? It's cool. Some people, though, really like retro stuff. I get that. So like, if you're carrying a flip phone and you want this, then you got it all. I, don't know, I played Oregon Trail. Like That was a thing. It was funny how even though... Like our computers were newer than this. It was still like a thing where you... It's a classic game everybody played. Yeah. Because you're just like, look, you're learning. Like, yeah, I'm learning. Just like Carmen San Diego. I'm learning. They also said, they brought that up too. They're like, what? Bring in Carmen San Diego. That's an old game too if they, this does well. Time to learn. I Learning can be fun, Nikki. It can be fun. <laughs> the riot talks about wanting a day off, but when do we get a day off from them? Whoa, you suck at this. The worst of the riot on Radio U. You know, here's a guy that I'm all but certain we've talked about before. His name is Don Gorski. Don Gorski. The guy who does the Big Mac, uh, like he eats one a day or something. Two a day? Two a day. And he, he's known like he's the Big Mac man. He eats 14 Big Macs every week, two a day. He goes to McDonald's and is like, he buys them in bulk, though he doesn't get a price break, and then he just microwaves them at home. Really? So it's, so why doesn't he just go more often? That right there to me is like, bro, that can't be good. Like, a, you've got like, what, a three-day-old Big Mac that you're putting in the microwave no, or putting in the oven or we've something? we learned a long time ago. Those things can last forever. I want to know what his reheat protocol is. You know, he probably takes it out of the bun, reheats the hamburgers, and then warms the bun and puts it back. I'm seriously curious about how he does it, but I don't know. He says there's only been... Eight days in the last 44 years that he hasn't had Big Macs. Wonder what happened on those days? Eight days. He doesn't say? or He doesn't say what it is, so I don't know. But they say that he's uh, he's hyperactive, his his words. So he's like always on the move. 
It was just why he says, like, hey, look, I'm eating Big Macs. I'm thin. Well, okay. It's also he's just eating two Big Macs, which I think still full. Like, I want to know what else he's eating for the day. No idea. Because if he's not eating a whole lot of other stuff, then, yeah, you're eating two Big Macs. But, I mean, you could do worse if you're... If you're eating everything from McDonald's all day, every day. So we just crossed into March. He Mm -hmm. says that as of right now, he is on track in May to have eaten 30,000 Big Macs. And he never gets anything from McDonald's for it. No, I think they nothing. gave him a shirt once, and that was it. Nothing. He gets no price break. He gets no like marketing money. He gets Why nothing. Why doesn't he, he get just... a Big Mac card? Like Something. any other restaurant would be all over that for the press for it. I would think that if they were smart, I'm with you, that when he crossed his 30,000th Big Mac, yeah. McDonald's would look at him and say, Here. you just paid for your last Big Mac. Because we're paying for it, and then every so often they bring him back up again. Mm-hmm. So in 2016... When he ate his 28,788th Big Mac, the Guinness Book of World Records did uh, like recognize that. So I don't know if like every day when he eats one more, do they recognize him again? I have no idea. But 44 years he's been eating Big Macs. I think one of the things that this can teach us, Nikki, is, is that we always think in terms of like, all right, I'm going to eat 30,000 Big Macs. Not all at once. All right. <laughs> one foot if in you, front of the other, one day, you keep going. You just do a little bit each day, and pretty soon, ta-da! So are you saying maybe even the reverse, like if you, you don't want to have a Big Mac, you know, just every day, just keep fighting it. Sure, that. Especially because they have the big ones now, and then the small ones. Nikki, I think you should just get a Big Mac. The baby Mac. <laughs> you, I feel like, you, you know what, you've got to go to the police station today. You should get. A, I got to go fill a uh, report. I got to go file on somebody. So tell me that you don't deserve a Big Mac Why today. Why don't I just bring it with me and I can just eat there while we quietly fill out things. That's right. And you're That'll like, make me feel better. Whoops, I got a little special sauce on this form. But you know what? That'll just help you remember who it is. I could show my appreciation as well for the police officers and bring them all some. Hey, y'all, Big Macs. <laughs> Does that mean you're going to expedite this? <laughs> Need some paperwork done over here. <laughs> This was the worst of the riots, and we'd like to congratulate you on having the stomach to stick around to the very end. The riot exists because Radio U exists, and Radio U only exists because of your support. Find out more and give now at RadioU.com slash donate. You should never talk to people ever. 